All right. Uh, hi, world. <laughs> Whoever is out there, welcome to the Women's History Month Trivia Contest uh, with Unsung History. Uh, so hopefully people will start joining us soon. If you're joining us, um, please leave a comment on whatever you are joining us from so we know you're there. Uh, we should, if you put comments in Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, we should see them in our little window. So feel free to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to start the trivia contest in a little bit, but first I was going to give a little background on the history of Women's History Month, because I think that is a fun story. Uh, and hopefully more people will join us while we're waiting for that. So uh, Women's History Month started in Santa Rosa, California. Uh, and this was in 1978. Uh, so actually the year I was born. So that was the first time there was a Women's History Week. And it was in Santa Rosa, California. And this was, you know, it was exciting. It was fun. People enjoyed it. There were like essay contests and stuff. So it got more popular. They decided to keep doing it. And uh, eventually other schools were doing it, other cities, other states were doing it, and uh, they petitioned or convinced the, uh, the government to do it nationally. So Jimmy Carter declared Women's History Week uh, as a presidential proclamation. And then eventually uh, Congress picked it up the next year. And then uh, a few years later, we got Women's History Month. So that is exciting. Uh, so I'm not sure anyone is actually <laughs> with this live. Oh, Anav is here. Tanya is here, but they can't participate. Well, I don't know, guys, you might need to participate if we don't have more people joining us live. So let's start having people sign into the Kahoot and we'll see if, uh, there are people signing in there. So this is what we do. Hold on. Uh, to go to Kahoot. One second. I'm going to give you everybody a pin number and so you will know how to get there. So uh, if you want to join the Kahoot and do the trivia contest with us, uh, you go to, you can see it on the screen there, you go to kahoot.it and you put in the pin number 5002767 when you get to the screen. So go ahead and do that. You. We'll either need sort of a big screen or you'll need maybe a second device to do that on. Uh, if you are doing that, if you're having two devices, the second device doesn't need to be very big because you're just going to see answers and you just pick answers. So you can have a small amount of screen real estate and do that. If anyone doesn't really know what they're doing and is having trouble logging into the Kahoot, uh, put that in the comments on whatever you're on and we'll see that and can help you out. Also, you will need to watch the stream because otherwise you won't be able to see what the answers are before you click them. Yes. Thank you, Teddy. Uh, so we have one player so far. I know that uh, Terry Pollock, who is in the audience, uh, wants to play. So <laughs> uh, might need a little bit of help walking through Kahoot. Uh, so, Mom, if you need help, <laughs> let us know. Uh, all right. And uh, Teddy, what, who's your favorite woman from American history? I don't know. There are lots to choose from. That's true. I, I have a few historic women uh, who are joining us uh, in the live stream. <laughs> I have one of those. Do you? We have a we have a whole set of them. So we have oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, and of course Arthur's favorite, Kamala Harris. Nice. Uh, yes. Uh, Stacey Abrams is coming out soon, but has not come out yet. Yeah. Uh huh. Very nice. All right. We have two players on the Kahoot so far. We have Tanya and Terry. Uh, so I. I'm here to tell you if anyone is catching like a live minute and you're wondering whether to join the Kahoot that um, everybody, there are prizes. everybody is going to win a prize. <laughs> everybody, gonna, that could be a big promise if there are lots of players. Well, that could be, but so far there aren't lots of players. So, so far, it seems everyone's like a winner. Everyone's a winner. I'm just saying. So, um, I am going to go ahead and tweet out uh, another reminder in case anyone wants to join us. Uh, so, Anya, who's your favorite woman in American history? 
Oh, wow. Well, you know, I mean, it kind of changes depending on what I'm working on since I've apparently just doing a deep dive into biography. So, <laughs> so my current favorite is Catherine Bement Davis, who wrote Factors in the Sex Life of 2200 Women, which was published in 1929. Um, so she's the current favorite because I'm spending a lot of time with her. Um, but I have another favorite that is even less known than her, and her name is May Bragdon. And May is my favorite because she was this professional working woman. She was a stenographer, um, but her real love was photography, and she kept copious diaries, and she recorded her activities and the activities of her friends and family, including this fantastic women's group that she was part of. They called themselves the 12 Perfect Little Ladies and had incredibly fun parties with costumes and elaborate menus and themes. And um, yeah, and she's like, you know, just a really interesting, intriguing person who offers this great insight into what it was like to be a woman of a certain class um, in Rochester in the 1890s. And so, um, I mean, I'm like fairly obsessed with her diaries right now because they're just so fun. And they're like, every, every page has photos clipped or did have photos clipped to the pages, but they've now all been digitized at the University of Rochester. And they've all been digitized, so you can choose to, you know, see the diaries or see the pay see the photos or see the transcripts, um, as well as seeing how they actually were, that the way May actually put them all together. So, so she's definitely one of my favorites right now. Not because of, you know, like amazing accomplishments, but just because she kept such cool records and took such fun photos. Cool. Uh, I am. I, I, I've been finding several women that I've like, I want to write a biography of her. And every time it happens, the archives, her papers are only in print form and not digitized yet. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I can't really get to an archive that is, that is not compatible with my life. <laughs> right. For sure. All right. Well, oh, Teddy, Teddy didn't think he had a favorite. You don't have a favorite woman. There are too many to choose from. Too many to choose from. All right. Uh, I don't know if I said a favorite. Uh, Shirley Chisholm is one of mine for sure. Um, I'm going to go with Shirley Chisholm. Okay. Yes. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and start the contest, I think. And uh, everybody's a winner. <laughs> two players? We can play with two players. It'll be fun, Teddy. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I think I go over here to start. So uh, I'm going to warn you um, that it it starts easy and then gets a little bit harder, but hopefully the multiple choice aspect makes it not too hard. Uh, and hopefully this will be fun even if you're watching this later because uh, it'll stay on these various services. Hopefully it'll still be fun uh, to look at later because we're going to try to to give you some, uh, some extra information on some of these. So. I'm going to hit start. All right, Teddy, do you want to read each question? Might need to move our historic women. <laughs> Who is the first woman vice president in the United States? All right, so on your other device, hopefully you'll see the little red, blue, yellow, green, and you should pick uh, one of those. One answer. And uh, we tried to start out easy. All right, everybody got this one right. So, <laughs> only two people. so very good. Uh, of course, we all know this one, Kamala Harris. Uh, the other three all were uh, nominees for vice president uh, from various parties at various times. And uh, fun fact about Kamala Harris, uh, my seven-year-old, Arthur, is pretty obsessed with Kamala Harris. <laughs> has met her loves her so yes there is oh that's cool he's he, actually he, met her nice he has he cried but he met her <laughs> Aww. all right so moving on next question this one hopefully will be easy too
You don't have to read it. Which right? civil rights leader's resistance of bus segregation sparked the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955? Okay, this is just giving me like shades of where you have to pick all the squares that have a bus in them. <laughs> and you're a human. <laughs> This, uh, I tried to find a picture. I think this is from an actual, I don't know if it's her bus, but it's an actual Montgomery bus from 1955. Oh, wow. Nice job. Hey, uh, look at that. All right. Everybody knows this one. Doing what good. All right. Very good. So next up, you're going to read it. Whose portrait is slated to grace $20 bills starting in 2030? I kind of wish the answer were Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving that one away. Um, yes, the answer, of course, is Harriet Tubman. Teddy, do you want to give our little fun fact about? Oh, we didn't write it down. So uh, when Trump was president, uh, he had Steve Mnuchin sort of slow walk the rollout of this um, because Trump, of course, likes Andrew Jackson, who is currently on the $20 bill because he is, you know, a bigot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, it, it is back on and uh, 2030 was always the plan. So it's not actually any slower than it was initially slated to be. But we all wish it were going to be a little bit faster than that. Yeah. All right. Tanya got disconnected. Tanya, are you able to get back into the Kahoot? I don't know. Do, 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 do. I, I can't tell. Maybe if we go to next, we'll know if she's still in it. Terry has a streak with three correct answers in a row. Good job, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> All right. Let, let's wait a second and see if our player can get back into the Kahoot. <laughs> and we, we've got a, a battle, a fierce battle going on here. <laughs> right. Everyone's a winner. So even if you're coming in late to the feed and you want to join the Kahoot after a couple of questions, please go ahead and do so because uh, everyone is a winner. Uh, and everyone will win. Only a few people will get the book since there's only four books. Yes. Well, currently that's not a problem, honey. <laughs> Tanya can send herself her book. <laughs> <laughs> she can save herself shipping. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to move on to the next question. Uh, <laughs> but, you don't win by default. <laughs> but uh, it, it, Tanya, if you can get back in, please do. All right. Next question. What SCOTUS case allowed protective legislation for working women to protect health, safety, and morals? So I, my goal here was, I think the actual answer is hard, but hopefully the other cases <laughs> that I put in as the uh, fake answers will, will help you out a little bit. You can tell one case. Wait, no, that isn't. This is the wrong one. Yeah. Whoops. I did that with all the, the SCOTUS ones. Ah. All right. Ding, Very good. Ah. Muller v. Oregon. Uh, so, Anya, do you have background information on Muller v. Oregon? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> for this forum. Um, yeah. Um, Muller v. Oregon is a super interesting case because it um, created a legal loophole for women workers because a previous Supreme Court case had ruled that you couldn't have um uh, limitations on the length of the working day because it supposedly interfered with workers' freedom of contract. Mm -hmm. um, but in Mueller, the court decided that the state had a compelling interest in protecting women's health, safety, and morals, um, and that that compelling interest overrode the freedom of contract. So in the short term, it was a huge victory for laboring women and their advocates um, but in the long term, it was a very problematic case um, because it laid the groundwork for saying that discriminatory treatment was constitutional and would ultimately kind of undergird the whole battle over the Equal Rights Amendment because um, people um, feared slash hoped that the Equal Rights Amendment would do away with um, gender specific legislation. Um, such as that authorized by Mueller. All right. 
Well, let's move on then. It looks like one of our players had trouble answering that one. So you got to answer answer really quickly on this. <laughs> All right. Tiny. Tanya again. What? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See, now we have three players. <laughs> but now she's got to... What was the first state to grant married women control over their own earnings in 1860? Yeah. And I found an 1860 $5 bill as your image here. Oh, good job. <laughs> There's an inadvertent hint in the image if you look closely. <laughs> Wait, how was that a hint? Uh, it, it actually says New York on that $5 bill, but you have to zoom in. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, because, uh, of course, in 1860, the, uh, the there wasn't centralized money yet, so the bills were printed by individual states. Uh, so that happened to, that wasn't on purpose, but that happened to be. <laughs> yeah, so so it's Elizabeth Cady Stanton's home state, um, also Sojourner Truth's home state. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So uh, we, we have a player who's having trouble. So, all right. You I got to answer more quickly. Yeah, I don't know. Either you have to answer more quickly or There's a 20 second forcefully. time limit. All right. So let's try. What Supreme Court case struck down a minimum wage law for women? I can give you a hint. It's not Bush v. Gore. <laughs> oh, no. No, I'll no. <laughs> Yeah, that seemed like a pretty obvious. <laughs> Huzzah! All right. Woohoo! Everyone got it right. Uh, yeah, so the this uh, question was originally a lot longer. And I think I gave too big of a hint. I could, well, Kahoot wasn't, uh, didn't like the whole question as written. <laughs> uh, so we had to make it a little shorter. But yeah, so as I understand it, this was uh, because women had gotten the right to vote at this point, they no longer needed protections because <laughs> they, right, they were equal. Time limit. I really think you should have given it a longer time limit. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next one. What state was the first to pass an Equal Pay Act in 1919? <laughs> I'm seeing all, all the images that you found for this, Kelly. <laughs> no, that was the most fun part. <laughs> what answer? Aha! Yes, it is indeed, indeed Montana. It uh, is. So we finally have one that somebody got wrong. <laughs> I think it's the oh, first time anyone's gotten a question wrong. Uh, so that's actually a good thing because uh, I think it helps people learn. But yeah, Montana was was sort of at the forefront of, of women's rights, huh? Mm -hmm. in, in several ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one, one might argue that Montana was far more progressive on women's rights 100 years ago than it is now. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe argument, actually. <laughs> one, one lives and works in Montana might say that, you know, yes. <laughs> to be, to be clear. <laughs> All right. Next question. When did the federal government guarantee equal pay for equal work with the Equal Pay Act? So when did it happen in Montana? In well, 1919. It happened in Montana in 1919, but this oh, right. is a different year. Because otherwise you'd know it would be 1919. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, well, that only knocked out one. <laughs> 1963. That is correct. All right. Uh, excellent. 60s seem like a, a decent time for women. I mean, before my time, but <laughs> <laughs> seems like it was good. I All right. Into the 60s. All right. Tanya again. <laughs> Tanya again. The lead. What amendment granted some women the right to vote? <laughs> I also tried to make this one. I mean, I think a lot of people know this one anyway, but I tried to make it obvious with the ones that it's not. <laughs> like the Second Amendment, the, the yeah. right to bear arms. <laughs> yes. Yes, Our of course. 
Ah. This was the 19th Amendment. And Teddy, why do we have some in parentheses there? Oh, because some women weren't allowed to vote, like Asian American women, because they couldn't apply for citizenship. And there wasn't any way to become citizens, so they did not get the vote. Uh, and uh, also some Native American women, uh, a lot of Native American women and, uh, and African American women in the South, but also elsewhere face challenges. Uh, so yes, lots of women who, who did not automatically get the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. Okay, uh, moving on. All right, and there's one state in which Anna Howard Shaw, one of these that ar argued in 1914 that, and this is important, she said native born women should get the vote and immigrant men should not, they should lose the vote. <laughs> It, it, it wasn't a good argument. <laughs> uh, Anna Howard Shaw, bit of a nativist. <laughs> the answer is South Dakota. Yes, uh, nobody got. Yeah. Yes. So um, in uh, South Dakota, they were gonna try. They were trying to pass a referendum, essentially, uh, for to give women the right to vote and or. The right to to give them the ability to vote <laughs> How did somebody get this? and uh and yeah anna howard shaw and this was happening in other places in the the midwest too and anna mm -hmm. howard shaw uh, gave a, a famous speech where she was like no women need the vote because those darn immigrant men have the vote right now are you being anna howard shaw <laughs> all right next What abolitionist was the only African American to attend the Women's Rights Convention in Seneca Falls in 1848? Do, 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 do. All right. I thought some people might get tricked on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yes, uh, interestingly, Frederick Douglass was the only African-American at the whole convention. Because and the only man. No, no, well, he wasn't no, he the wasn't. only man there. There were 32 men there. But, um, yeah, they, they didn't invite any African-American women. <laughs> so, Teddy, what? tell us who did invite Frederick Douglass. Elizabeth McClintock. Yep, Elizabeth McClintock, who was one of the, the organizers, invited Frederick Douglass. But, right. since Werner Cruz did attend uh, the meetings in the 1850s was the only black woman to consistently attend those meetings. Yeah. So it was a it was a good guess. Just yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next. I don't know if anyone will get this. What pioneering <laughs> position and suffragist is the only women to have been awarded a Medal of Honor? <laughs> And then had it revoked, and then had it reawarded. Wait, what? You didn't say. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's true. Uh huh. And was I and was well that. known for wearing trousers. And when somebody accused her of wearing men's clothes, she said, "I do not wear men's clothes. I wear my clothes." Hey, look at that! Wait, yeah. I was going to say that. No, but you need to say that. Remember the other part. So first of all, say this. Right. Um, she was the first woman U.S. Army surgeon during the Civil War. And where did she famously wear pants? At her wedding. Under her wedding skirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I haven't heard that story. Yes. All right. Excellent. Next. What woman rode a horse to lead the 1912 New York City Women's Suffrage Parade and earned a PhD in economics from Columbia in 1921? We need to come up with our own Jeopardy theme song. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, we can't do the actual Jeopardy I don't know songs. the Jeopardy theme song. Also, that would be infringing on copyright. Nobody got it. Nobody got it right. I did a whole episode of Unsung History on Mabel Pinghuali. <laughs> yeah, this one, it's tricky, though, right? Because I know Mel Holland is the most famous woman on the horse. But that was, was it 14? Uh, Welcome with being inaugurated, and I think and, uh, fifteen. I could be wrong yeah. though. Might I be... got that one first try. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you listened to your mom's podcast. Good job. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
I've never listened to a single episode. Uh, so I, I need to go back a second to uh, a comment. Uh, I, we've got a comment that I think what we're saying is that uh, Dr. Uh, Mary Edwards Walker's wedding was in Akron, Ohio. Is that what was in Akron, Ohio? Wait, it was in 1913. Oh, 1913. 1913. Yeah. Missed no, no, that was 1912. We're saying that Inez was in 1913. Uh, so we have two people who are uh, following along who happen to be in northeastern Ohio right now. So that is pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. Next. <clears throat> what black woman picketed the White House with the National Women's Party, even though the NWP leaders refused to address black women's suffrage? What? Sojourn or Truth is an answer. Oh, oh, that was an acronym. Right. That's right. Uh, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> so whoever picked Mary Church Carroll is right. And she is one of my favorites for many reasons. But among them is that she went to Oberlin College, which is my alma mater. Uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other three, the fake answers, are all women that I have done episodes on. I haven't yet done one on Mary Church Terrell, but I've done on the other three, uh, who are also, also excellent, excellent women that you should get to know. Excuse you. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Very good. What act ended marital expatriation for some women? And this is the loss of citizenship when you married a non-citizen. This one's kind of hard, I think. I don't know if I made it any easier either with my fake answers. Well, we'll find out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. Nope. No one got this one. Yeah, the Cable Act of 1922. And then there was a follow-up Cable Act in, I believe, 1930. Um, but... Um, and the supporters called them the Equal Citizenship Act, but they actually neither of them made citizenship equal. They made it easier for women who married non-citizens to become citizens, but they did not actually provide for equal citizenship. All right. Tanya says she answered, but her answer didn't go through. So ah! that's what happens sometimes. Bummer. All right. <laughs> What year was the Voting Rights Act amended to include language protections, expanding access for non-English speakers? Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. <laughs> What's surprising here is that all the answers are so recent. <laughs> Well, I mean, they all had to be after 1965, so. <laughs> well, that's true. That helped. <laughs> yes, so, so the answer is 1975. So not, not too long after the initial Voting Rights Act, which I suppose in some ways makes sense because the recent decades haven't been so good for voting rights. <laughs> so there was yeah. a brief period when we were making some progress. And, I think we originally had one of our questions being about Shelby V. Holder, but I don't think that one made the final cut. No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, next. In what year did the Arizona Supreme Court strike down its law barring Native American men and women from voting? This is probably the hardest question on here. I would not have known this one. No, I wouldn't have known it either. <laughs> I, mean, I did not know this one until somebody else provided the answer. <laughs> All right. So the answer was 1948. Everyone said 1970, which is a decent guess. So uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have known. Um, but, you know, obviously this was uh, much later than 1919. So Native American women in uh, Arizona, at least, did not have the ability to vote uh, for, for quite some time after the passage of the 19th Amendment. All right. Ooh, this is a multi-select. What were the suffrage color or colors of the National Women's Party 
multi-choice is enabled on this question, so you can pick more than one if you think more than one is right. So you pick more than one, and then you submit it. That's how you do it. Click on one or more, then you press the submit button. That will appear when you click one or more. It's confusing to me seeing the colors not on the colors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so Wait, how are there... Wait, I'm wait. not sure how to interpret the results here. Wait, how are there five answers? Well, because different people pick different things. Oh, right. Yes. So the answers are yellow, white, and purple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I put a, a black and white picture <laughs> 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 that would not give anything away. Uh -huh. All right. Which first daughter was the first and only child of a president to be born in the White House? I think this is a hard one. Well, I, I was hoping that uh, at least one of the fake answers would be obviously wrong. <laughs> All right. The answer is Esther Cleveland. Uh, there have been other children born in the White House, uh, some uh, one or two grandchildren of presidents. Uh, and there have been some children of staff members of the White House born in the White House. I think uh, two of Thomas Jefferson's slaves had a child together uh, that was born in the White House. Um, but Esther Cleveland is the only child of a president, a uh, sitting president at the time, who was born in the White House. Uh, and of course, there have been weddings in the White House as well, um, but, but we don't have any questions about those. Okay. Who was the first Black woman to run for president? This is not the first Black woman to run for president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gave it away. <laughs> gave her away, at least. <laughs> All right, everybody guessed Shirley Chisholm, which is what I assumed everyone would guess because until two days ago, I thought Shirley Chisholm was the answer <laughs> too. Uh, and Teddy is going to tell us who Charlene Mitchell is or was. Hey, this is pretty vague. Yeah, so just say this part. She ran in. She ran in 1968. She's part of the Communist Party of USA and she mm -hmm. was on ballot in two states. Yes, so she did not run with a major party, uh, which of course is not what the question says. It just says first to run. And so in 1968, she was the nominee for the Communist Party USA. They only made the ballot in two states uh, because of laws in other states that prohibited them from getting on the ballot. Uh, but nonetheless, she was the first to run. Shirley Chisholm, of course, four years later, was the first to run uh, with a major party. So Shirley Chisholm was <laughs> the obvious and nearly right, but not quite right answer. All right. <laughs> Who was the first woman justice on the U.S. Supreme Court? <laughs> Hopefully this one's easy. Still zero answers. Oh, no, there's one. Three. Two, one, zero. <laughs> the answer, of course, is Sigrid A. O'Connor. All four of those women are, uh, they were the first four women on the Supreme Court, but Sandra Day O'Connor was the very first. Nominated by Reagan, I believe. I think so. All right. All right, we have another Supreme Court question coming up next. Oh, is this one? Oh, we've added someone. Who's Adam? I don't know. Welcome, Adam. Welcome, Adam. Can you post Everyone's a comment? Everyone's a winner, so. <laughs> Can you post a comment so we know who you are? All right. Next question. You need to know who you are. Who was the first woman to argue a case before the U.S. Supreme Court? I get this one. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Who's, who's Adam? Oh. Wait, wait, that's our kid? Yeah, cool. All right, the answer was Belva Lockwood. Now, clearly, I need to do an episode on Belva Lockwood because she is another one of my favorite people, uh, and I think just not enough people know about her. Uh, no one was tripped up by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, although my husband, my husband took this as a practice test last night, and he was tripped up and and thought it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, she's and of a course, justice. Oh, wait, she, right? She did argue in, right. in front of the Supreme Court, so it, it's not a bad answer. She just was not the first. Okay. Next. What state, for one case only, had the only all-woman state Supreme Court in history in 1925? You got a one in four chance. <laughs> I don't expect anyone to know this. I did know this, but only because it came up on my on this day in history thing a few months ago. I've already forgotten the answer to throw this one. I have the answer. The answer is Texas, uh, which is probably the least likely of these four. What is this so I'm, I'm going to tell the story of this one. So what happened? They had an all-male state Supreme Court, as you might expect, in 1925. And this state came, or this case came to the state Supreme Court. And uh, the case was about this, like, uh, I don't know, like a men's club. It was called the the Wood the Woodmen of the World. And they were very sort of politically active and, you know, they had their fingers in every pie. And so when it came to the state Supreme Court, all three of the justices on the state Supreme Court were members of the Whitman of the world. And the governor went to 10 more male justices and said, can you sit on this case? And all 10 of them were part of the Whitman of the world. And so finally, the governor said, well, I know a way <laughs> that we can have a, a panel on the Supreme Court that has no members of the Whitman of the world. And he picked all women. Uh, so for wow. Case, <laughs> what a story. Uh, it was, I mean, Texas was more uh, more progressive than you might think at that point. They were on the heels of having a woman governor. So, you know, it, it wasn't that bizarre, but but it was bizarre. And it was the only time it's ever happened in any state, <laughs> sadly, <laughs> in the entire country. All right. Um, so Terry says she's frozen. So hopefully she is going to get unfrozen or can rejoin the game. Isn't that called sawing? Yes. Who was the first woman to serve in the U.S. cabinet? Another great woman. Never favorite. Two, one, zero. Everybody got Frances Perkins. Yes, indeed. Uh, Frances Perkins there, was the. Uh, you know, there are three people. Right? But the, all the people who answered got it. Okay. Uh, so Frances Perkins was the Secretary of Labor, and she was appointed by FDR. And uh, when I was looking for fake answers, uh, they're actually, for a very long time until like the 90s, there were very few women. So she was fairly early on, um, but then it took a really long time for there to be uh, any sort of <laughs> women in the cabinet. All right. Yeah, Adam Tanya, won. Tanya again. Adam won. Adam. Wait, what? <laughs> I think people are getting kicked out and having to restart. So, wait a minute. Who was the first woman to run for U.S. president before the Nineteenth Amendment passed and before she was even thirty-five years old? <laughs> that is an image of her, but I don't know if that'll help. <laughs> I don't think it'll help much. One, zero. Wait, somebody actually. Answered. The answer is no. Victoria Woodhull, and she uh, she's a, a a feisty one. Her running mate was Frederick Douglass, but he never agreed to that. <laughs> she just put him on. <laughs> she was like, "He's my running mate." Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, of course, she did not win. <laughs> no. But it did make Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony want to be her friends. Well, hey, that's something. I like Victoria Woodhull. She's got spunk. Definitely. All right. Who was the first Latina and first woman of color to hold statewide elected executive office in 1923? This one's hard. Mm -hmm. Although the fake answers are all more recent politicians than 1923. So that might help you out. Is that a picture of her? It is a picture of her. It is a picture of her. The hair made me think it might actually be her. 
I mean, it is, in fact, her. I don't know if that'll help. <laughs> I don't think it will. Uh, so, oh, yes, somebody got it right. So it is Soledad Chavez de Chacon from New Mexico. She was the Secretary of State uh, very, very early on, 1923. So that is exciting. Uh, Susana Mendoza is much, much more recent. Elizabeth Guzman is still currently a delegate in the House of Delegates in Virginia. And Ileana Ros, uh, I don't know how you say her name, Latinan, uh, she was a congresswoman fairly recently. So those are all much more recent answers. Tanya, again, <laughs> has the <laughs> highest answer streak. Of three. What congresswoman, who was also the first woman in the U.S. to hold federal office, voted against the U.S. entry into both World War I and World War II? <laughs> She's not in that picture, though, is she? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I have the answer right here. <laughs> Yes, the answer is Jeanette Rankin. So there is a weird piece of uh, trivia about her, and that is that she was only in Congress for four years <laughs> and yet managed to vote against entry into both. Two years at a time. Yeah, so two, two terms. 1917 to 1919, then 1941 to 1943. Yeah, so her first term uh, was very early uh, before women even had, uh, before the 19th Amendment. 1917 to 1919, and then she lost the election, wasn't in Congress for a long time, ran again in uh, 1940, uh, was elected to a term. She was the only member of Congress to vote against entry into World War II, uh, against declaring war on Japan, and it ruined her political career, and that was it. No more terms for her. All right. Who was the first woman to preside over the House of Representatives in 1921? <coughs> oh no, Terry can now hear and see, but can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mom, you could uh, try getting back into Kahoot. With a new name. With a new name. Uh, so Maybe the answer Terry again? is... Alice Robertson uh, from Oklahoma, uh, first to preside over the House, and she was not a feminist. <laughs> she, as far as I can tell, didn't really like women, voted against um, pretty much anything that would have helped women. Uh, I think she was anti-suffrage until she herself had the right to vote. <laughs> so, but she was a woman. How is she, anti she was a woman, but she didn't. I, I, there are plenty of women in Congress now who don't seem to like women very much, too. So make, this isn't that weird. It doesn't make sense <laughs> at all. <laughs> Politics. All right. Next. Who was the first woman governor in the United States and later the first woman director of the United States? Mint. Another person I like a lot. The answers, by the way, are the first four women governors. So <laughs> if you guess any of them, you're you're not so far off. Nellie Taylor Ross in Wyoming, uh, which was uh, not necessarily for all the right reasons, but uh, fairly strong in women's rights and suffrage, uh, was the first. Uh, Ma Ferguson was only very shortly later. In fact, I think she started like Teddy, <laughs> like two weeks later. <laughs> so very, very close. Uh, and then it took a while to get get a few more. Okay, next. Who was the first woman of color elected to Congress? She is also known for authoring and sponsoring Title IX. Mm -hmm. And there's an upcoming Unsung History episode about her. Ooh. You're so helpful. I know. The answer is Patsy Mink. Mm -hmm. uh, Shirley Chisholm is a, a very good, not right answer, <laughs> but, uh, but a very good answer nonetheless. Um, Patsy Mink. Uh, and yes, I am doing a series of episodes in May on Asian American and Pacific Islander history. And I'm going to be talking to 
Patsy Minks at Biographers, one of which is her daughter. So that is going to be an cool. exciting episode. All right. Wait, there's another, there's another person. When were women first allowed to wear pants on the Senate floor? There's another player. I saw it before okay. you. This is mind-blowing. <laughs> there's another player. Oh, that people couldn't wear Shh. pants. That women couldn't wear pants. Pants on the Senate floor until whichever year it is. Until whichever year it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait to see what people guess. Ooh, there's a, a range here. Yes, 1993. That, that's just, it's its so long. Uh, I mean, to be fair, there weren't a ton of women in the Senate <laughs> before 1993. Um, but yes, that that's just mind-blowing. I mean, there are still weird dress code things going on in the U.S. Senate. They still have to wear jackets. And uh, when our senator, uh, Tammy Duckworth, had a baby, she had to put a laser on her baby to bring her out on the senate floor which oh, she needed to get special permission to do so laser <laughs> like what i'm wearing yes all right maybe we need to go a little quicker and say a little less <laughs> when was the equal rights amendment first introduced to congress Don't let the picture fool you <laughs> i was just thinking that's a misleading picture kelly it is. It's a big hint, I think. All right. The answer is 1923. The ERA has been around for nearly 100 years. Yeah. <laughs> Next year. Yes. All right. Next. When was the Equal Rights Amendment first brought to the Senate floor for a debate and vote? Do, 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 do. I fooled my husband on this one. He got it wrong. All right. The answer is 1946. So not only has it been around <laughs> since 1923, but all the way back in 1946, they were already debating it and voting on it in the Senate. Uh, and yet still, <laughs> we don't have an Equal Rights Amendment. Wait, we don't? We don't, honey. We don't. We don't. Montana has one. Ah, very nice. Montana is one of the states. It has a state one. Cool. All right. Oh, we have Kathleen with us now, too. Who's Kathleen? Uh, I assume that Kathleen is Kathleen Cahill, but we will find out maybe at the end. All right. Who was the first president to endorse the Equal Rights Amendment? This is tricky. What a great sign. Men of quality are not threatened by women for equality. Nice. The uh. answer is Truman. <laughs> I did not know that until I was putting this together. Uh, so, yes, uh, Rebecca DeWolf, who's written an excellent book on the history of uh, the early history of the ERA, uh, gave us this question. And excuse you. <laughs> Sadly, the answer is not Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. What woman who discovered a comet in 1847 is considered America's first professional female astronomer? And another one of my favorite people. This one, I gave really hard answers because all four of them are early women astronomers. <laughs> it starts with an M. <laughs> that's not a very big hint you just cut out one of them though the answer I, is maria mitchell now maria mitchell is one of these people i said earlier there are what, people i want to write guessed, biographies yeah, I said, of I said it was an M. and uh and yet their papers are somewhere else and maria mitchell is one of them her um her autobiography her memoirs are publicly available so i could read them but her papers are in cape cod at her museum all right. I believe the next one is easy, so hopefully that'll help people get back in. You believe. Who was the first African-American woman Oh, yeah, it's space? Been all easy. 
may only be easy if you have elementary school kids who have <laughs> Black History <laughs> Month every year. <laughs> but I do, so I hear a lot about her. What do kids have to do with anything? Because I think I learned it from you guys. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You didn't know that? I don't know. The answer is Mae Jameson. Mae Jameson, uh, Mae Jameson is, uh, is still around. It was not that long ago. And uh, she's still active on Twitter. She's, you know, doing lots of interesting science education and outreach. Uh, so very cool. I like Mae Jameson a lot. That was a picture of her, by the way. But that would not have helped you. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> uh, all four of those women are African-American women who have been in space. They are the only four African-American women who have been in space. Next, when did the Women's Armed Services Integration Act pass, letting women become permanent members of all military branches? <laughs> all right, Tanya, if you get this one wrong. Tanya has an unfair advantage here. As Tanya said earlier, if 1948 is an option, it's always the answer. <laughs> uh, so you should read Tanya Roth's excellent book on women in the military uh, during the Cold War, uh, in which you would learn this very excellent piece of trivia. All right, Teddy, if you're going to keep doing that, it's time for bed. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the home stretch here, guys. I know it's a long, long uh, trivia quiz. In what decade did women, did the first woman rise to the rank of general in the U.S. military? All right, again, Tanya, this is this is all on you. <laughs> this one is hard because I didn't give a big range of answers here. <laughs> the answer is the 1970s. All right. I think we're moving out of military. There might be one more military. Let's see what the next question is. Oh, sports. Who was the track and field star who became the first American woman to win three gold medals in a single Olympic Games? <laughs> Teddy knows all the answers because he's taken this. <laughs> well, I don't know all of them. I know this one. I thought I'd catch somebody on this with a wrong answer. So it was not to Patrick Didrikson Zaharias. Uh, she won two gold medals and one silver, which was kind of wow. a, I, I, she got thrown out of the of that event or got silver because she was disqualified uh, for doing a jump that she'd been doing all the way along. But on the final jump, they said, no, 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 you can't do that jump. So she got silver. Uh, so it's a little bit disputed, but she did not win three gold medals. So the answer is Wilma Rudolph, uh, who was an amazing uh, black track star. And uh, shockingly, my seven-year-old Arthur actually knew this answer <laughs> because wow. apparently they had studied her in school. So he, not they. Well, they meaning his class. Oh, right. So uh, go elementary schools. All right. What is the name of the professional women's football league that ran from 1974 to 1989? And if you listen to unsung history, <laughs> you should get this. Yeah, this one's testing your loyalty to unsung history. <laughs> Do you even pay attention to the names of episodes? I think it's obvious. We'll see. I do like the alternates you came up with. <laughs> yes. So uh, the lingerie league is a real thing. <laughs> it was just later uh, than 1989. And uh, powder puff football is a real thing, um, but not at the professional level. And women in helmets, I just made up. Sorry, whoever I threw off with that. <laughs> the answer is the National Women's Football League. Hey. What? Who was America's first major prima ballerina? This is not a picture of her. <laughs> Although it's in silhouette, so hopefully it, nothing about the picture will throw you off. That was my my hope. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Blast off. No, wait, no. Happy New Year's. Yeah. 
The answer <laughs> is Maria uh, Tallchief. Nobody uh, got it. Who is a uh, Native American, uh, probably one of the most famous uh, Native American, uh, certainly the most famous Native American dancer. Um, but yes, she was America's first prima ballerina. All right, next. What black musician song, Prove It On Me Blues, references same-sex attraction? Anya, I'm assuming you added this one. I did. <laughs> I think it's hard. <laughs> I had a student who write, wrote an MA thesis about this musician, so. Awesome. Um, that's how I know. <laughs> Perhaps I need to do an episode. One, zero. Happy New Year's. Ah. I didn't think anyone was going to get this right, but the answer is Ma Rainey. Um, I don't know much about Ma Rainey, except that isn't there a musical about her or a movie about her or something? Yes, there is. I, I, it's not very good, though, in my opinion. Uh, but she was, <laughs> but she, was, she was really interesting. She was, um, I mean, she, she was quite the performer, and she was known for, you know, wearing really over-the-top dresses and jewelry and, um, and that kind of thing. But she would also perform in you know tuxedos nice uh well perhaps a future episode of unsung history all right all right we're getting toward the end guys we're almost there finally when did the comstock act make it a crime to distribute information about contraceptives and abortion through the u.s mail and i did not know this uh until we put this together that's a, not a picture of Comstock, but it is a political cartoon of Comstock. <laughs> Zero. Happy New Year. The answer is 1873. Mm -hmm. Hopefully everybody knew that it wasn't 1903. <laughs> I think it's hard. I think it's a really hard question. All right, we've got two more questions uh, in, in similar vein. Oh, right. So, when was Margaret Sanger arrested for distributing birth control in defiance of New York state laws? <laughs> Love that. That is not a picture of Margaret Sanger, <laughs> 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 nor is it an accurate representation. <laughs> a form of contraceptive that she distributed. <laughs> All right. The answer was 1916. And then I think she went to jail the next year or something. Yep. And she served 30 days. 30 days. All right. All right. One more question in this vein. When did a New York appellate court uphold physicians' right to distribute contraceptives across state lines and national borders? So if you're paying attention to the last question, it's probably after that. <laughs> Yeah, but this case has one of my favorite names of any case. Yes, this is uh, another one that the, the full question was too long. So <laughs> I did my best. All right, the answer is 1936. And it's U.S. versus one package of Japanese pessaries. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I, I, th that seems like a difficult image to find. So, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Or for anyone to recognize, for that matter. <laughs> All right. Next. When was the first U.S. study of women's sexuality conducted by a woman? And it was published by Catherine B. Davis. And That's if you were listening to us at the very beginning, you will have the answer. Wait, what? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Wait, what? Anya gave us the answer at the beginning. She did. Mm hmm you weren't paying attention. That's a picture of her. That is a picture. It is an actual picture of her. Ah, uh, nobody got it. The answer is 1929. Yeah. And I so was is that attention. the the book that you are currently working on? It is, yeah. Excellent. I guess nobody was paying attention. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody was on even on yet. Yeah. I think it might have right. just Which Supreme Court case made it legal for interracial couples to marry? I'll give you a big hint. Teddy thought it couldn't be right because it sounded too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. This one also has a really good name. Yes. Yes. 
a very very good. That one. was a that was too big of a hint. Gotta give some. Yeah. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Virginia, uh, and this is a super super important landmark case. I don't remember which senator, but one of the senators yesterday in the hearings said that yes. it shouldn't have been, shouldn't be. <laughs> You know, some of the senators said so many things that it was hard to keep track of which crazy thing went with which crazy senator. Yes. Pretty sure I pulled a Bruce Griswold and Brown. Well, those are all famous cases, so. Well, I've never heard of Loving or Oberg. Or well, or then we have some education to do for you, Teddy, so we'll work on that. All right. Just a few more left. When did the President's Commission on the Status of Women release its final report? In this case, the picture may help you. <laughs> it will? It might. Is it black and white? No, because it was from the 60s. Yes, so 1963. In this case, 48 was not the answer. So 1948 is not always the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody guessed it. Nope. One person did. What? Nobody guessed 48. No, yeah. Oh, nobody guessed 48. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I thought you meant nobody guessed the right answer. All right, two more questions. Who's going to take the lead? Well, Tanya again is already What in. former Sorry. first lady chaired the President's Commission on the Status of Women? Is she in the photo? <laughs> no, she's not in the photo. <laughs> she's definitely not in the photo. <laughs> None of those are first ladies, honey. Or former first ladies. I mean, you could probably recognize who it was by a picture. Yes, you definitely could. A, a picture would be too much of a giveaway. Yes. So the answer is Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, and I think that was one of her last sort of big mm -hmm. things that she did. Uh, and so Kennedy would have asked her then? Yep. To, to mm -hmm. share that question. All right. Last question. It's another hopefully easy one. Who was the first woman United States Secretary of State? It's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Three of the four people on there are former secretaries of state. Only one of them was first. Yes, the answer is Madeline Everybody? Albright. She, well, she died yesterday, honey, so she's in the news right now. So oh, right. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's a thing that a lot of people knew anyway, but also uh, she's, she's very much in the news right now. Yeah. Uh, Condoleezza Rice, of course, the second, and Hillary Clinton, the third, and Gina Haspel is, was the uh, director of the CIA. So ah, not the secretary right. of state. All right. Well, let's see here. Who's on the podium? Mm -hmm. Kathleen, who joined us late. But that Terry, who fell off. <laughs> Wait, that was actually the Terry that's not working. Terry yes. again. Actually, I and I Tanya again. Woohoo! Terry again is a runner-up, <laughs> and Tanya is a runner-up. I find it weird that. Terry again got less than her original. <laughs> well, it took her a while to sign back in. So like I said, everybody is a winner. Uh, so I am uh, very, uh, Tanya, you you do in fact count if you would like a hand knit. Uh, so, so please let me know. And uh, congratulations to everybody who joined us. Many, 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 many thanks to uh, the team of writers who helped us out, uh, all women historians, and their names are all on the website, so you can, can find those. Uh, and it was really fun. So thank you, everybody. And thank you very much to uh, Teddy for helping out and uh, to my great co-host, Anya. It was great being here. Congratulations to all of our winners. Yes, congratulations. Yes, Tanya, really, really, I will knit you something. <laughs> I will email you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Right. I am going to end the broadcast now. And thank you and happy Women's History Goodbye. Month.